G'day everyone, well on to part 2 of the autopsy on the DLP television. This is the projector side, the uh, most interesting bit. I also believe Aussie 50 did a teardown on one of these a while ago. His was a uh, Toshiba, but it was sort of arranged differently. It was sort of like a uh, right angle, like a square sort of thing in its arrangement. Mine's um, linear, just goes straight down the centre. But it should still have the same parts as that, so... I'll post the link in the description to his teardown, and you can compare the two if you want. But that's your uh, switch mode power supply. You got mains filtering input here. It's fairly basic setup. You've got a uh, set of inductors, uh, metal oxide varistor caps, and a fuse. Then that had a wire coming up onto here, where that's your uh, your switching. You got your switching transistors and MOSFETs big filter cap, another inductor, and a little relay, I believe that is. Yeah, little relay, we can have a look at that in a second. But all of this is all going to come off as good spare parts. All of these uh, caps and things and transformers, they're all going to go in the uh, spare parts boxes. Definitely not throwing those out. Although that, some of them have got eyelets as the uh, solder terminal, so I'm going to have to uh, work out a way to get those off without damaging it but yeah like I did in the previous video I'll do a big scan over all of the boards and you can all have a look at the uh, parts of them but I'll get these ferrite chokes off there are there are these fairly big uh, cable ties to hold them on but they snap these onto the uh, data cables and things although that's fan cooling they put them onto these to filter out any uh, spikes that can form in the uh, lines and distort the picture or disturb the uh, signal input. So that's what those are for. I know a lot of uh, speaker stereo companies and things advertise these so you can put them on your speaker line and use them to uh, basically get a better sound. But we've got, uh, yeah, mains filtering. you got the ballast for the, and... Uh, Controls for the arc lamp, which we'll have a look at. I'll get the arc lamp out, get these other two ferrite chokes off, and get this whole top chassis off. There's the arc lamp from it. It's a big quartz xenon bulb in there. It appears to be alright, not 100% sure, but that's what uh, basically lights up the entire set. Comes out of there through the uh, colour wheel and um, filtering lens. Through another set of lenses in here which is a mirror that will reflect it onto the DLP chip and then through the uh, main head on the top there. But oh, there's the ballast from it. I did do a bit of research on these and it's uh, 2000 volt ignition as in to strike an arc in the lamp it's 2000 volts but then it drops down to only 50 volts as it's running power so it's fairly high powered stuff this. It's uh, Definitely one of the most unusual lamps I've had. But you can see a big cooling galleries and things through that. Most of the bulk of this is all just cooling. There's a big five and a quarter inch fan there. There's another little one cooling the DLP processor. It's uh, fairly big stuff. You can see that's gotten hot. It's all uh, it's made the same stuff as there, but it's just because the uh, UV and stuff that this must throw off. It's actually deteriorated the plastic, but we'll get all that off next and have a look at the color wheel. Well, we've got the color wheel out, which is actually in pretty good condition considering how many hours this thing must have done. But those little blobs of gel are for balancing because this whole wheel rotates at around 10,000 RPM. And I believe it's got something to do with filtering the light that comes through the uh, Xenon lamp. But it is just a little BLDC, brushless DC motor. So, in theory, if I were to plug that into a the logic board from a 3.5 inch hard drive, I might actually be able to run this. I might do that later on. But that's where it goes in there. You can see there's another little, uh, like a mirror, it's all angled inwards so that the light passes through there and past the colour wheel on its way into 
the rest of the set. But I just went there. It's all uh, very thin aluminium. And the uh, that was also before the colour wheel. That was on the uh, the plastic housing there. So that's all just scrap plastic now. But little bits of glass like that I'm going to hang on to because I like stuff like that. And see, it's from one angle when it reflects. You've got cyan, magenta, and yellow. But when you look right the way through it. You get red, green, and blue. So it's obviously got something to do with filtering the uh, the white light that comes from the Xenon lamp. Now this is where things get even more interesting. I've got a series of lenses in here which are angling and refracting the light from the colour wheel into a beam, which is then bounced off these two mirrors through another lens here, through this prism, past the DLP processor and then through this lens assembly out to the mirror you can almost get like a reverse image of whatever you pointed at it's actually really neat you can see as they are sort of like getting a new image of the shed roof it's a really nice bit of our gear I'll get a uh, microfiber cloth out and we'll very carefully pull these lenses apart and I will put them back together again just to keep because they're these are way too good to throw out and destroy so that one's got to come out next not sure how I'll get that prism out though because it looks like it's glued down but I'll try my best and carefulest to remove it but we'll have a look at the DLP chip first I'll um probably make pulling the lenses apart a separate video and having a look at the uh the other stuff but yeah, we'll get the DLP chip out and have a look at that. Here's the main uh, DLP chip. This is basically the heart of the entire machine. Each of those little uh, gold solder pads there corresponds to one of the one of these little pads on the other side. Yeah, it's pretty small stuff. Would have taken a lot of work to make one of these little laser technology and stuff. I'd suppose would be used to put one of these together. But if you want a uh, real good close-up, I'll put a link to our uh, Aussie 50s part 2 of his teardown. He uh, put one of these under his USB microscope and you could practically see all of those little gold pins and everything that were joining it. But Next I'll do a separate video on uh, tearing down these lens assemblies and I will put them back together after because these are way too good to throw out. But that's the one that light goes through after the colour wheel. And then that's the other uh, main one. They're fairly heavy actually. They're pr probably all glass. Solid glass lenses. Fairly thick. And that's the uh, prism that's set on top of the uh, DLP chip like that. You can't really see because of the, uh, the angling of it. But you get the idea. Seems it's made like two uh Triangular prisms have been laminated together to make the one, even though you cannot un actually see any uh, laminations through it. But here's when the uh, other processes, Texas Instruments. There's another uh, mysterious one there as well, which it's about as big as my fingernail. It's tiny. There's a lot of small stuff on these boards. Very small transistors and uh, diodes and things. That's what a lot of these are. In fact, that'll probably even be a bridge rectifier, I'd say. Four diodes like that means it'll be a uh, probably a rectifier. There's a lot of interesting stuff inside these machines. And yeah, it sort of concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you really enjoyed it. And stay tuned for part two on the teardown of the lenses. And of course the power up of the colour wheel. Thanks for watching.